My guest tonight is the co-host of the new History Channel show, More Power, but most of you will recognize him as the well-known character Al Borland from the great 90s sitcom Home Improvement, that is Mr. Richard Karn. I think they call that molding because it was in the refrigerator for too long. <laughs> I don't think so, Tim. I am super excited to have Simon Majumdar join me on here. I mean, I've been doing what I do now <laughs> on the Food Network for probably over a dozen years now. So being on the shows like The Next Time mm -hmm. Chef and following all the way through Cutthroat Kitchen, Tournament of Champions, right through to now. My special guest is Wine Enthusiast 2017's Mixologist of the Year, author of the Spirits and Drink book, I'm Just Here for the Drinks, owner of the Brooklyn Tasting Room, Amor e Amargo, and the Speak Easy podcast host, Souther Teague. Years ago, I guess it's four, maybe five years ago now, I had the opportunity to, to buy a case of Old Overholt Rye Whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, that happens to be sort of my favorite everyday drinker for the rye whiskey category. Old, longest continuously produced rye whiskey, you know, like that's great. Um, but I bought that case of whiskey from uh, the auction house at Sotheby's. Yeah. Uh, and it was from 1909. Uh, so a collaboration with the boys over at SB Nation NFL. We've got RJ Ochoa from Blogging the Boys, Rob Stats Guerrero from Niners Nation, and Brandon Lee Gowton from Bleeding Green Nation. Oh, I'm gonna go the player route, and now okay. I'm really gonna take the term overrated literally, and I'm gonna go Tom Brady. All right. All right. Take a term from you. <laughs> there is big loser energy coming off wow. of Brady. Tonight I have a very special guest from Nevada Agency Distilling Company and co-founder of Smoke Wagon Bourbon, Aaron Chepanik. Yes, you're not looking to have your face on the side of the bottle being sold next to Pappy Van Winkle. You know, that's not that's not the ultimate goal. I don't want my face on the bottle. I want people to buy it. <laughs> and this, is, this has been, I have to say, this is so much fun. <laughs> Good. But now I have it in, um, well, travel form. Yes, exactly. You've got the, the one ounce that I that I handed off to you. And so the reason why we're starting with this one is because it's the lowest ABV of the pack. It's at 43%. So this one will help acclimate our palates a little bit to this high ABV uh, drink that we're about to consume. So I know, you know, we're getting close to the end here. I do have a couple of just fun questions for you, similar to the end of your podcast. Um, so aside from foods that you can't, your body can't tolerate, like oysters, is there a food out there that you would, you just don't like? Gonna, you can't shock eat. Everyone, but I hate pizza. I found two boxes of 30 year old McKellen that two I boxes. completely forgot about. Oh wow. Two boxes, I have no idea. It could have been 15 years, it could have been 20 years ago, but I put them away, I knew they were special, and I find them. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm like, wow. So I immediately open one. Yeah. I, I just, I immediately open it and the, the cork crumbles. Oh yeah, that is going to happen. The cork crumbles. Yeah. And so I've got all this crumbled cork in, in the sky. And I'm going, yeah. oh, ah. And so now I got to go find a, a, a sieve or, yep. uh, you know, uh, something. I, I actually, I went out to the store and I bought like a little, uh, 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 strainer. If you go to Scotland, what food can you not go to without trying? Uh, well, the obvious thing to say would be haggis, um, but I assume you've maybe tried that before. But there's a fear around haggis. Oh, you know, it's it's delicious, and most people that try it are they either say, but yeah, I think they're often let down that it's not offensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's just uh, haggis is a peasant food. It's sausage meat, so. Any sausage that you've ever had, it's all the bits that you can't use as a fillet, or, or you, it's all the bits that wasn't you. So they made sausages with it, so they had spices and other things, and that's exactly the same with haggis. So there's, there's, there are oats in there, it's spiced. And... One of the reasons why yes. I wanted to talk to you was, you know, you look at uh, whiskey from this incredible point of view of your taste, and you look at it from your, your kind of, you, you have an exquisite taste, I know from when I've been listening to you. And then when I look at it, I look at it from why. Uh, and so when I look at whiskey, I go, mm -hmm. well, why is whiskey? Why is this? Much as I love to taste it, but I don't have your skills. 
So really, that's where I come at it from this point of view. Um, well, the first time I went to Scotland, I went up there because I was in um, I was in a theater program, and we did the Edinburgh Festival. All right, yeah. So I lived in Edinburgh for a month, and you know, it was it was really great walking oh, yeah. around, getting to know that town, and, and of course, you know, you got the castle at the top of the hill, which is very you know romantic, and then you've got basically Holyrood castle down at the bottom of yeah. of the Royal Mile, which I guess is what they used for the Diagon Alley in, in Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Diagon yeah. Alley is, is, that, is that cobblestone between, you know, Edinburgh Castle and Holyrood Castle. Do you have a single favorite bottle of all the ones you bottled? Is there one that stands out to you more than the rest? Uh, for me, I would say it's WC Elevator Batch. That was sort of like my dream uncut, unfiltered that yeah. like where I wasn't constrained by price. I could just do whatever I wanted. And there are what it makes me realize is that for me as well, whiskey is about context as well. It's like being in, yeah. we can sit and we can drink it here. And of course, we're going to have exceptional whiskeys yep. made by exceptional people. But when you are in situ, and for anyone who hasn't had the chance to go to any whiskey distillery, whether it's in the United States or, you know, I've been lucky enough, whether it's in Asia or wherever it is, to go in Japan or wherever to go and try them. There is something special about when you're in those positions. And I think it I think it yeah. physically does alter what you're drinking. Uh, if you're going to share a dram of whiskey with four famous people, dead or alive, which four people are you picking? <laughs> um, you know, I... I think I would stay closer to home. I mm -hmm. think I would uh, I would share one with my grandfather, with mm -hmm. my dad, and my mom. Mm -hmm. 